start from the beginning, you know, start from uh, discussing how um, open source is important in today's time, you know, considering uh, innovation is no longer uh, a, a, a subject for, for a chosen few, for the large companies. And a lot of entrepreneurs and smaller companies are also innovating. How do you think open source then becomes important? Yeah, I think what, what we see out there is uh, in all large companies today um, is this need to actually constantly change, right? And um, you, you can think about it in different ways. People have different names for it. Some people call it customer centricity because your customers are changing all the time. People talk about getting into new businesses. But I think the underlying theme is uh, this need to change. And it's not something necessarily new. I think the successful companies have always kind of tried to change. But I think the big difference today is that is the pace of the change in some sense, right? Which has, which has never happened in our recent memory, how fast things change. And, and, and as a result of that, that's why you see the startups actually doing very well, because by the very nature, they're able to actually uh, adopt very quickly. So, so where does kind of open source fit in that? So for the large companies to actually do well and keep up on the innovation side or whatever that happens to be, I, I see open source in general kind of playing uh, two broad roles uh, in large companies, right? One is this general idea that most of this change that we see today is, is software-led, obviously, mm -hmm. right? So digital or whatever you call it, right? And so a lot of software is being written. It's true for most of, if not all of our customers. And so in general, open source has a role to play because just by the amount of software that's being written, mm -hmm. right? But there is actually a more fundamental thing that's going on. What I feel is this general commoditization at the hardware and software level, especially what you would call the enterprise uh, platform stack. Call it the operating system, call it the database, the middleware. Right, because in general, these are things that an IT department needs, but really they don't differentiate a company from the fact that you have a better database than I do really is not the issue, right? So we see that monetization happening where you have open hardware and you have open source software because it gives you that speed that I talked about earlier. So I think that's broadly uh, mm -hmm. what I see happening right. there. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here would be interested to know what Infosys is doing uh, to support open, air, uh, open, uh, uh, saying, uh, open source uh, softwares. And if you could cite any examples or, uh, or any stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think when, uh, when I was asked to talk, pick a topic here, and I said I'll, I'll speak about open source, I think, uh, the reaction was, uh, in some sense, uh, very similar to what most people have when they actually think about Infosys doing open source, because that's not what our history has been. But I think, kind of, if you look at what Vishal has been talking, if folks out there who have been listening to Vishal, uh, he talks about the renew new stuff, and but a more fundamental thing he talks about is the cultural aspect, right? What that really means is how we do those things. He wants to actually rapidly evolve Infosys is a company, not just about what it does, but actually how it does it as well. So if you look at if you look at what I would call the most successful by far open source uh, ecosystem out there is the internet, mm -hmm. right? And whether you look at the operating systems or the web servers. So the thing about the internet that it was never quote unquote closed, right? And the second thing it there was there was active collaboration between academia, the government, and the industry. And that's created this several trillion dollars worth of wealth, right? Um, and another, actually, example is something like a Xerox Park, mm -hmm. where what they did, even though it was inside, actually, a large enterprise, they hired like 24 of the brightest people that you could find and basically gave them money and told them, do whatever you want, mm -hmm. right? So why am I telling you this story? I think that's really the model we are trying to achieve at Infosys. Mm -hmm. And the example is OpenAI. So folks who uh, don't know about OpenAI, it's actually a nonprofit that uh, was funded by folks like Elon Musk, uh, Sam Altman at YCR, uh, AWS, and Infosys, where they have been given up to a billion dollars to actually basically do AI research, mm -hmm. uh, do whatever they want, mm -hmm. and make it all completely open, right? So. I think the next big thing after the internet of that scale is something like an AI, right? And none of us want it to be actually in the hand of 
small number of companies, and I won't take any names, but there are a lot of companies who are doing a lot of AI research, but I think our model is to completely keep it open, right? So that's kind of how we look about open source, is supporting with large amounts of money things like open AI. Right. But I mean, given uh, Infosys's DNA, it's an IT services company and we know how services traditionally has worked. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the challenges that, that have been to sort of drive such a new and innovative uh, uh, thing at the company? I mean, you know, given the yeah. size of the company, the number of employees it yeah. has. Yeah, so I, I would be lying if I say it's, it's easy, right? But that's the, whole, uh, that's the whole point that I started here mm -hmm. uh, to actually have some fun and... Uh, uh, but I think, but I think if you, it has to in the end, it has to come from the top. I think that's very simple, right? I'm saying the obvious. So when Vishal talks about people plus software, so he wants to transition Infosys from something that's primarily a services organization or a people-based organization into something that is people plus software, and and the software is in many cases actually open source, either stuff that we leverage or stuff that we build and contribute back. So as an example, there's a heavy, heavy investment that we are doing in big data technologies, right? We leverage whatever we find out there. Uh, we improve it because a lot of the enterprise features around security, around better tooling, even simple things like managing the versions correctly is really not something that you find in open source. So Infosys is making, taking the approach. We will find the best out there, make it work for the enterprise, and actually support it. Right? So we take the liability in many cases, which is, again, something unthinkable uh, for a company like ourselves. And then uh, that's kind of gets the flywheel going. right? Uh, and then we actually have the usual stuff. As you know, we have the, we have the largest uh, corporate university in the world. So there is a heavy investment in training. But I think that's just the start. Right? It's, uh, right. How far do you think, think you've come so far in, in bringing that change about at Infosys? Uh, so I think that the way I measure it, so actually we started this program just about a year ago now. We have something called osmosis for with two right. S's. Right. Right. Um, so that's kind of the thinking. We really, osmosis kind of moves slowly, right? Mm -hmm. But it does move. Uh -huh. um, and so the way I measure it uh, is the success that we are showing outside. Um, so I'm not going to count you. So we do about <clears throat> close to 100 courses in the company, but that's the point. But if you take an example like GSTN, right, which is a goods and services network, it's a very, very large uh, deal that at Infosys that many of us uh, actively participated in. And the only reason I think we got that was, uh, was the amount of open source that was part of that. That was actually a requirement. And, but requirement is one thing. We had to actually show credibility and expertise. Because the way I look at open source, your open source is no different from my open source, right? It's really who has the credibility and the expertise to actually go deliver. So I think you see signs out there uh, of actual large deals. Right. Uh, for a lot of startups, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs here in the audience, uh, India's startup culture is booming, and you know we're suddenly having a, a, a growth of platforms and yeah. softwares and products coming out of the country. How important do you think open uh, source plays a role for for budding entrepreneurs or people who are trying a platform or building a product for the first time? Yeah. So I think um, startups, in my opinion, were the pioneers. I think companies like ourselves, so I used to be a startup guy, so all I did was open source, right? I think it's only when you come to a large company. So this kind of view of a guy with big beard, with <laughs> Red Bull hacking on the MacBook Pro is, is really a startup thing. But I think clearly things have matured, but I think um, to me really is what really is the startup trying to do with open source. So at the, the statement that I made about you want to be as fast as possible and not do anything that is not really adding value uh, from your business, right? So, so I think startups have always been doing that, um, but I have run into startups that are trying to build what I would again call platforms in enterprises. I think platforms in enterprises are going to slowly over time becoming lot and lot open source. So really what you need to focus on is what value you provide on top of that. So we as Infosys actually uh, like to work with startups who actually have that kind of mentality, right? The same way as we, we don't want to build proprietary platforms anymore. We want to build applications and uh, be it SaaS applications or on-premise, whatever that happens to be.
Right. right. Uh, lastly, Naveen, uh, just to conclude, like all technologies, uh, there is a flip side to everything, uh, not just technology, the technologies, in fact, everything. So about the threats that come uh, along with open source, what do you have to say about that? that? And do you think that those are uh, things that, 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 I mean, don't you think they are important enough to consider before someone opts for, for going open source? Yeah, I think they, yeah, we always have to be careful about the software use. Uh, but I think the realization that I have had and hopefully many companies have is, I don't think open source is quote unquote any worse than commercial software. There are studies out there now that actually say it's actually superior. Even in something like, uh, quality and security, things that people would think that I get open source because it's quote unquote free. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go ask people, and this was a study done by Black Duck about last year, where they asked people to rate uh, why they use open source. And the top of the list actually last year or two years ago was quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was security and free was somewhere down below. And last year's research actually shows the top of the list is innovation in some sense, right? But I think having said that, what we are doing as a company uh, is really supporting open source, which is what really customers want. So if you look at a hard bleed like bug, I think it's less important that there was a bug. I think all software has bugs. Is that one really had to figure out who's going to fix it, right? And that's what delayed it. And that's what we do. So we have, for example, our own big data distribution, so which we actively, which we support and we sell to our customers. And we're doing that more and more with open source. And I think, I think large companies, that's what they want, right? And we indemnify as well. Why don't you, in conclusion, share with us your vision of, uh, of you know, uh, working with open source technologies or building open source technologies and where maybe, you know, in, in, uh, in your vision 2020 does this feature? Yeah, I think, as, I think as Vishal has set out, I think uh, he's set out a vision for 2020 of $20 billion. And, and he expects about 20% of that business to actually come from what we call software, right? Uh, so software is could be either something that you pay per use or a licensed software. Um, and I, I think the way we are approaching it, a significant portion, if not all of that, will be basically based on open source, right? Whether we build it using open source and offer a service or we actually have like a big data platform, uh, which is all open source, right? So. That's part of it. Great. Thanks so much. Thank Naveen. you. Great speaking with you. Thanks Thank you. Much.